Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Recently, Gao Zhikai, Deputy Director of the Center for China and Globalization, addressed the chip and trade issues between China and the United States in an interview. Particularly striking was his statement regarding chip trade, stating, once China achieves independence in chip production, it will undoubtedly further expand its exports to overseas markets. At that point, China's chip independence will become a global chip revolution. This implicit statement called on the United States to abandon its so-called chip control strategy and instead pursue a globalized trade path within the chip industry chain. In a media interview, Gao Zhikai also stated that China is unconcerned about losing 15% of the U.S. market share. China has developed for 5,000 years, and if the U.S. intends to bully China and shut it out, then China is prepared to be without the U.S. market for the next 5,000 years. In fact, Gao Zhikai's remarks, Deputy Director of the Center for China and Globalization, illustrate the reality of China's breakthrough in the chip and technology sectors. Previously, facing foreign constraints in areas like tunnel boring machines, memory chips, and automotive-grade chips, China accelerated the development of its domestic industrial chain, and in a short period of time, achieved domestic substitution of these products. The result? Products and equipment designed by Chinese companies not only offer lower prices and better after-sales service than Western counterparts, but in some cases, even surpass those of developed Western countries in design and performance. It can be said that China's development from zero to one was relatively slow, but no other country can match China's ability to go from one to two and then from two to three. Some may argue that China's vast industrial system was built on a climate of rampant imitation. However, the reality today is that China's new energy vehicle industry is the largest and most powerful in the world, and it also leads the world in photovoltaic, wind power, and ultra-high voltage technologies. These technological breakthroughs not only demonstrate the strength of China's domestic industrial base, but also confirm that China is shifting from inheriting backward Western production capacity to independent high-tech development. According to an overseas research report released by the People's Daily, the development of Chinese products, such as new energy vehicles in the U.S. market, has been severely hampered by U.S. tariffs. At the same time, U.S. automakers will also see their domestic manufacturing costs significantly increased, and their export competitiveness weakened due to the tariffs. Both Ford and General Motors mentioned the negative impact of U.S. tariffs on their overall revenue in their financial reports. Ford alone lost $800 million due to tariffs, while GM lost $1.1 billion. This shows that trade barriers built on tariffs not only harm Chinese companies' trade with the U.S., but also cause significant suffering for U.S. industrial giants due to the globalization of the U.S. auto industry. Currently, over 50% of the internal components of U.S. produced cars are imported from other countries. The implementation of the new tariffs will force U.S. automakers to bear the additional tariff costs. Mr. Gao Zhikai, Deputy Director of the Center for China and Globalization, explained the simple principle, China will manufacture products it doesn't have. If the US doesn't need Chinese products, then China won't need American products either. Compared to China's comprehensive industrial chain model, the United States relies heavily on China and other external countries for commodity supplies in many areas. For example, after China imposed controls on rare earths and other scarce raw materials, U.S. representatives repeatedly called on China to relax or lift trade controls on these raw materials. Since 2019, high-end chip products and services related to the United States have been subject to increasingly tighter controls. Currently, Chinese companies have built an independent and self-sufficient industrial chain for chip products using mature process technologies. Only in the high-end CPU, GPU chip sector, 
are Chinese companies constrained by chip foundry processes and still need to import from U.S. companies. However, given the current pace of domestic breakthroughs, the high-end chip problem will be significantly alleviated within the next 5 to 10 years. Thus, in the face of U.S. hegemonic blackmail, Chinese companies are gradually gaining the initiative. Unlike Japan, when it signed the Plaza Accord with the United States, China has maintained its bottom line in this tariff negotiation with the United States. As a result, the two sides have engaged in rounds of talks, but have yet to reach an agreement on the relevant issues. However, according to data released by the Semiconductor Industry Association of the United States, mainland China already ranks first in the world in mature process chip production capacity, and this advantage is expected to continue. Faced with the scale effect of China's chip industry, how long can the United States maintain its advantage by relying solely on a few monopolistic chip giants? Secondly, the chip industry, like other industries such as automobiles, is a product of the global division of labor. The United States has relied on its hegemony to monopolize the high-end chip market, harming the interests of companies in dozens of countries. What decisions will these overseas tech giants make when they realize that U.S. chip control measures will create powerful competitors for their own development? A former executive of ASML of the Netherlands has clearly stated that U.S. control measures will ultimately backfire, forcing China to accelerate technological research and innovation in related fields, thereby breaking down the technological barriers set by the U.S. If the United States intends to shut China out, then China has already prepared for the next 5,000 years without the American market. Professor Gao Zhikai's statement is so confident because, throughout its 5,000-year history, the Chinese nation has consistently been a world leader. The United States has only existed for a little over 200 years, making it in no position to dictate the course of China's development. Even if China loses market share from the United States, its industrial system will continue to function normally. The U.S. technological blockade has, in fact, become a catalyst for China's independent innovation. China's leading global chip production capacity using mature process technology and 64% share of chip packaging demonstrate that the technological iron curtain created by the U.S., which has dominated chip manufacturing, is being torn apart. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.